We have a lot of new. <coughs> we have a lot of news to get to about conversations that Nick, uh, that Nick Khan has been having about various media outlets. But we got one. We got one conversation I want to have beforehand, and it is focused on the Hall of Fame. This is my own speculation. It is not from any reliable news site. But I would be surprised if there is not another induction into the Hall of Fame. We do know that the, that the Warrior Award will be announced at the Hall of Fame ceremony on Friday. And I'm assuming that the Legacy Inductions will also be announced, I would presume. Because I don't expect them to stop doing the Legacy Inductions unless Triple H has changed you know, the layout and the expectations of the Hall of Fame. The one thing that I know I haven't spoken about, though, is... That the initial plan was for Batista to get in, uh, the, for Batista to get inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, but due to his media schedule of filming another movie, uh, I think it was a spy movie. I could I could be wrong. I think it was a spy movie, but due to his filming schedule with that movie, it prevented him from again appearing at WrestleMania. So with that being said, he again had to take a rain check on getting inducted into the Hall of Fame. It is something that has been very prevalent since the initial induction of Batista in 2020. Batista was supposed to go in in 2020 before the pandemic. Due to the pandemic, WWE was able to change out the, you know, WWE was able to change out the Hall of Fame class because of the fact that the class, the ceremony was postponed until the following year. But also, Batista has been subject for induction since 2020 and ever since 2020 he has had to take a rain check because of various because of various things preventing him from doing that i think at this point that what would be best for wwe is to try and call batista in like january or you know now and basically say look we want to induct you next year keep your schedule open or even if you want to do it via satellite and have somebody else, you know, like like they would at the award shows, have somebody else in, uh, accept it on your behalf and send in a speech. Like you'll be the, you'll be the landmark, you'll be the headliner, but you won't be the last person. You know, we'll have somebody there with the rain check because if you're that desperate to induct him into the Hall of Fame, why not have him get inducted into the Hall of Fame and do it however you can and make concessions to his work schedule if you have to. Because Batista was initially supposed to be the person getting inducted into the Hall of Fame this year, but instead, due to his filming schedule, they went with Rey Mysterio. So that explains why Rey Rey was inducted into the Hall of Fame. Which was, I don't know about you, it was a surprise from my end. But now we shift over to the other news as we're going to break it apart into multiple stories or multiple things because there is other stuff to talk about. And that is, according to Nick Khan, well, this is a side story. It really wasn't something Nick Khan spoke about. It was something that was mentioned in an article on Fightful that the media rights deals, that negotiation for the media rights deals can, in fact, start this week. You know, this weekend, so, again, following WrestleMania, we will likely have negotiations for the media rights deals. We will, have, we will likely have the negotiations for the media rights deals pick up, but the question is, and actually this is from a, now that I think about it, it is from a Nikon spiel, as Nick said, he, uh, as Nick said, he anticipates giving... NBC and Fox first taste of the pie, as he put it, because they currently manage WWE programming. You know, they currently manage WWE programming, so they're going to get first taste or first dibs, per se. But negotiations can begin this weekend. Ironically enough, WrestleMania is this weekend, so I can tell you right now, there is not going to be any negotiations for media rights deals this weekend. With WrestleMania this weekend. The fact of the matter is. This means that. 
I mean, I don't know if they're going to try and get the sale done before they start talking media rights deals, or they're going to get the media rights deals before they start talking sale. But the conversation we had yesterday about the potential sale of WWE is getting interesting, is getting a little bit more interesting, considering the fact that the media rights deals are coming up now where negotiations can open, where you can open up negotiations for the deal. This does not mean that the deal is expiring now. Or... And, and, you know, potentially expiring soon. The deal is not expiring for a year. It is that WWE and their media rights partners partner up, share, you know, set up the deal a year in advance as opposed to, you know, as opposed to, um, well, on short notice because, I mean, you got to plan out Television, you know, you got to plan out the television schedule for the for the uh, for the fall and spring and su- you know the seasons, and that's what WWE and that's what you know that's why they do it a year in advance. And you know, fact of the matter is, that was underwhelming. But fact of the matter is, WWE also has, um, WWE also has, if you think about it. They did the media rights deals back in 2018, and SmackDown did not move until 2019 to Fox, if memory serves correctly. But that is just something to remember. Also something to remember, according to Logan Paul, his contract expires following WrestleMania 39, which actually, actually, honestly, isn't too surprising, or wouldn't be too surprising, because of the fact that um, because of the fact that his first match was a tag team match with Miz against the Mysterios at WrestleMania, so it would not be surprising if his WrestleMania if his wrestling contract expired following WrestleMania 39. I would expect, and I was expecting Seth Rollins to win, but it would be interesting to see if Logan Paul does continue to stick around with WWE and sign another contract following WrestleMania. But now we shift over to an interesting conversation that Nick Khan had with John uh, John Orand and Andrew Ma- Andrew Marchand. Uh, Khan said that exclusive domestic TV rights negotiation window existing with partners NBC Universal and Fox opens up this weekend. This is from also uh, F one. The Wrestling Observer. This is from the Wrestling Observer. Khan wouldn't put... uh, That's not the other part. And the other part is... The interesting part... Is... That Khan also, in that interview with... With John and Andrew on their podcast... Dropped an interesting nugget when it comes to potential... A potential return to pay-per-view if a rights partner was interested. Meaning, if, when WWE is negotiating their media rights deal, if a media rights partner like Fox or NBC wants them to return to pay-per-view, then WWE would consider returning to pay-per-view. I don't know if that means that they would stop doing the pay-per-views on the network or maybe do some pay-per-views on the network and some pay-per-views on actual pay-per-view. Sort of like how uh, Impact Wrestling has different pay-per-view, you know, a pay-per-view on this streaming service and a pay-per-view on this streaming service. But also, so that is something to watch as far as if WWE is willing to return to pay-per-view. But also, um, on the herd with Colin Cowherd, which I would applaud, I would applaud Nick Khan. I would applaud Nick Khan exclusively for the amount of media appearances he's doing as uh, WrestleMania approaches because he is on the herd with Callan Coward and he said that WWE employs 50 to 70 writers and producers to help with creative, which is led by Triple H and Bruce Pritchard, which in my opinion, with Bruce E.P. and creative, that could explain the Vince McMahon-isms because if there's anybody that is a Vince McMahon person, it is Bruce Pritchard. But Khan, uh, when asked how far in advance they have planned out for WrestleMania, Khan explained months in advance, where months in advance, months and months and months in advance, if you said now, 
where is the creative team in there with their process? They are months ahead of WrestleMania. Obviously, a huge focus is on Saturday and Sunday to make sure we can execute what is what the plan is. But they're months ahead, and they know that's the way it should be because 52 weeks a year, three to four programs a week, if you're not months ahead, you're going to get caught, which is completely factual because WWE has fallen victim to that in the past, getting caught for not being months in advance when Vince McMahon was running the show. But this report is also from Fightful, you know, from Fightful. Uh, this layout and excerpts from the the herd is from Fightful Select. But I completely agree with Nick Khan, and I'm happy to hear that. But I also think that some of the Vince McMahonisms could be attributed to the fact that Bruce Pritchard is leading creative alongside Triple H or helping with creative alongside Triple H. But I have also been a much, much, I've maligned WWE for lazy booking and, you know, not going the long-term approach. I have maligned WWE for that over the years. And it's uh, very pleasant to see that WWE has been uh, or is set to plan months and months and months in advance. So props to them for that. But again, I just want to point out, we are now less than a week away. We are a few days away from WrestleMania. And we got, I'm going to try my best to keep up with everything going on for WrestleMania this week. And any news or anything that comes up, I will try my best to keep ahead of or to get ahead of. And I hope that you guys enjoy what is going to be the best weekend or what is always the best weekend to be a professional wrestling fan. Welcome to our Super Bowl. I will see you in the next video.